Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! The first key, you want to walk the works of God. You want to see the supernatural, notable, undeniable dimensions of the hand of God in ministry, in finances, in whatever area. The first requirement, non-negotiable requirement is light light the power of light sufficient spiritual illumination knowledge and understanding please write it down light john chapter 1 and verse 3 john chapter 1 and verse 3 the bible says all things were made by him the him there being the word in fact john 1 and verse 1 says in the beginning god i mean he says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Is that true? And the word was God. Verse 2 says the same was with God in the beginning. Verse 3. All things. How many things? Including extraordinary finances. Does it, is it part of all things? Including an enviable destiny. All things were made by him. And he says without him. That means outside of his influence and participation was not anything made that was made. And then verse 4 says, In him was life. Everybody say, in him was life. And that that life was the light of man. So you know where the light comes from now. In him, the word was life. And that life now translates to the light. In him was life. And that life was the light of man. So when you are in search for light, where do you go to? The word of God is the exclusive custodian of God's light. Very powerful. Light. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. Still speaking about the word of God. That produces light. Colossians 1.16. It says for by him were all things created. Is that in your Bible? The things that are in heaven. The things that are in earth. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones. Dominions. Principalities. Powers. All things were created by him. And for him. In Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, Acts 20 and verse 32, he says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able, in it is ability, to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So among them that are sanctified, not, not everybody has that inheritance. They are still sanctified. But among them that are sanctified, a few people can be separated who become possessors in experience. And he says it is the word. The word will come in the midst of those who are sanctified and separate a few people. May you be part of those people in the name of Jesus Christ that you will be a notable Christian. It will be clear in your, that your life is not ordinary. It will not just be a cliche nor a blind confession. A walking, living epistle of the mighty power and grace of God. Everybody say light. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Light according to scripture represents understanding. It represents knowledge. Here's what it says. The labor of the foolish. The foolish here not being an insult is a description of a state. Are we together? The labor of the foolish weary at every one of them. Why? Because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Not because there is no city. The labor of the foolish weary at every one of them. Psalm 45 and verse 4. 
Psalm 45 and verse 4. 45 and verse 4 Psalms. It says, Ride prosperously in your majesty. Ride prosperously because of truth. So your triumphant entry is not about desire alone. If you must have a triumphant entry to your place of honor, you will ride prosperously. The chariot that you carry you into that place of dominion and honor is truth. Are we learning? So everything we seek to come into its reality in this kingdom is dependent on light. Now please hear me. Please listen very carefully. No amount of prayer, no amount of fasting, no amount of spiritual activity will replace the genuine pursuit for light. All of these experiences are wonderful, but when you ignore, in ignorance, they are powerless. What empowers fasting? What empowers prayer? What empowers giving? What empowers spiritual activity? The battery that gives these activities their power is the light that supports them, not the activity in itself. You can fast and not obtain any results. You can pray and not obtain any results. In fact, I tell you, you can drop a seed down and not obtain any result. What turns your seed from donation to a spiritual transaction in the realm of the spirit? God himself being a witness is not the money, it's not your hands, it's not your dropping it down, it's the revelation that powered that activity. Are we together? He said, who do men say that I the son of man am? And he said, some say you are this and that. He said, but who do you say that I am? They kept quiet. And Peter said, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed. So that level of certainty is the level of revelation, not assumption. You can hold a beautiful clock. Even if it was gold plated, once there is no battery, it will stand as a monument before you. That is how spiritual activities remain powerless, waiting for light. How many of you have seen that when the power holding company, when there is no light, all the lovely gadgets in your house do not have to disappear, but you are still frustrated. Because what powers it? Your AC is there, two horsepower, three horsepower, whatever horsepower with the warranty on it. And yet, you can sit there wondering. Your fridge is there with all kinds of things there. And simply because one principal factor was not in place. The fridge is not spoiled. You can even buy another one. It, the effect will still be the same. You can say, no, no, no. It's not Panasonic. I want, I want Sony. I want this. The effect will be the same. But with one blink of light, everything instantaneously. Listen. Do you know, no matter how long light has been off, the moment it comes, it does not take time for the gadgets to respond. At the instance of light. The darkness, the light will not calculate the times of darkness without it and then cover it slowly. The gadget that has stayed not powered for two days, not powered for one year, not powered for one week, not powered for one hour. They will respond the same way the moment the light is up. Let me prophesy to someone. I don't care how long you have waited. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, at the instance of light, go forward. At the instance of light, make progress. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. John chapter 1 and verse 5. It says, and the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Is someone learning? The first requirement for extraordinary manifestations, extraordinary results, is not desire, is light. 
So you arise and shine according to Isaiah 60 and verse 1. I will always like to quote it from Amplified. It says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light. Arise from the depression and the prostration which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. You don't arise because you are tired of sitting. You arise because your light is come. It says the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. That means the miracle that controls your rising is light. When God wants to show a man mercy, he shortens the distance between you and the light that should lift you. When God wants to show you mercy, he will shorten the distance between you and the light that you need to encounter. But for as long as there is darkness, the dominion of evil remains undisturbed. It will remain there. Light. The word of God, which is the principal communicator of light. You may have heard me teach it. Listen carefully now. That the word of God essentially contains three things. Number one, promises please write number two principles number three prophecies every time you open scripture you are having an encounter with these three spiritual dimensions number one again promises god's commitment to you number two principles showing you the modus operandi of the kingdom number three prophecies the spiritual compass that guides your life here and now and even in the future connecting the past the present and the future everybody say promises say principles say prophecies mm. promises principles prophecies this is what you find in the word of God the Lord showed me a scripture that I saw in the new light. Maybe I should just touch it very quickly. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 5. Genesis 1 and verse 5. The Bible says, And God called the light day. What did God call the light? <laughs> and it says, The darkness he called night. So God had to give light a name day and darkness he called night and then the bible lists for us the many activities that are associated with night and day one of it is weeping it says the moment there is night it is related to weeping is that true that means if you want to turn your night to day in god's economy you don't wait for time you bring sufficient light that can turn that night to day in God's economy, it's not the movement of time that brings night or day. Whenever light, sufficient illumination that can swallow darkness comes. Even if it is by 12 midnight, he calls it day. It says, though weeping endures for a night, that joy comes with the morning. So you can choose when your day starts. And if you are like Joshua, thank God his name is Joshua. You can ask the sun, stand still. I am tired of night. That means I, I seize this regulating day and night and day and night. Crying and laughing, crying and laughing. The, my son can stand still. So that whether it is a geographic day or night in my realm, it can be day. Was it not demonstrated in Goshen, even in Egypt, that when darkness was swallowing them, have you mastered the art of keeping your day stable? The light he called day and the darkness he called night. Hallelujah. The moment your light comes, it has become day for you. The moment your light comes, there are many people whose light came in the night. While they were studying, 
geographically speaking in the night but light came and for them that was the end of night so whether it is physical day or night in your realm it remains day perpetually he said he made two great lights one to rule in the day and one to rule in the night have you gone to the stadium in the night and sometimes when they are playing a match or a crusade if they if they blindfold you and you come there you will not even know whether it's day or night because of the high level of illumination you have to look at the sky to know that oh it's night hallelujah someone shout light now please sit down there are two reasons according to scripture why Jesus cried in the Bible the Bible records that Jesus wept John eleven thirty five. 35 that's the first reason why he cried he cried because he was at Lazarus's grave and the Bible says when he cried they said oh how he loved him so he was moved with compassion and he cried Second reason why he cried, I believe that should be Luke 19 from verse 41 and 42. Luke chapter 19 from verse 41. The Bible says he came near and beheld that city, Jerusalem now, and wept over it. Why did he cry? 42, saying, if thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, he says, but they are hid from your eyes. Not from your hands, from your eyes. Because your hands will only hold what your eyes have seen. It doesn't have to be hidden from your hands. It can be close to your hands and yet hidden from your eyes. Are we, are we learning now? The Bible says in Sodom and Gomorrah, when the angels came to rescue Lot, when he got there, he met a level of moral decadence in Sodom and Gomorrah and when the angels went in to Lot's room the people in that land came and said where are these angels that we may know them are you in your is that in your Bible and then Lot said no 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 don't do this kind of abomination against the Lord I will even give you my daughters and they said no is these angels that we want and the Bible says the angels drew Lot inside and struck the people with blindness and the Bible leaves a very interesting statement. He said they wearied themselves at the door. They were right there at the door. And because they were blind, their hands were okay. The art of just bending the knob to open it. They wearied themselves. There are many people who are standing in front of the door. But simply because their eyes are closed, they wearied themselves at the door. The miracle of open eyes is a real miracle. The miracle of open eyes is a real miracle. Every time Jesus saw blind people, he did not leave them in that condition. It was a message. Many believers I submit to you are very blind spiritually and are not interested in learning the ways of God but they are interested in the results that follow his ways. You see, the way it works is you have to know the ways of God to experience his glory. If you cannot experience, if you don't know his ways, you cannot know his glory. Exodus 33, the first request that Moses made was in verse 15. He says, Lord, show me your way. Show me your way. Show me your way. Did I get that right? Exodus uh, show me your way and then you back up to verse 18 that will be exodus what now and he says show me your glory so it was his way first and then his glory show me your way and then show me your glory thank you verse 13 now it says show me thy way is that true so he first asked of his way now go to verse 18 Five verses later, and he now pleaded and said, show me your glory. So if you do not know his ways, you cannot know his glory. Many believers desire the glory of God, but they do not want to learn the ways of God. 
I wrote down here, in this kingdom, dominion in any area is based on sufficient knowledge, not just knowledge. Let's read it together if you can see it projected. Can we read together? One to read. If any man think that he knoweth anything, he says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. I will always give this example. Please look at me, everybody. For a student in school who scores 10% over 100, a student who scores 20%, a student who scores 30%, and a student who scores 35%, who was the highest? Who passed in a great system of A to F? Are you seeing that now? If you are to give an award based on who was the highest, the one who got 35 will come to receive the award as the highest. But if you are to qualify them based on who scored F or D or E or C, all of them failed. That means the one who scored zero, the one who didn't write the exam, and the one who passed more will all stand in the same category. It is dangerous to know little. Because you will receive the same recompense with the person who is not even serious. This is the challenge with many believers. Something small about finances. Something small about prayer. Something small about the Holy Ghost. Something small about speed. Something small about victory. And you find out that our results become the same. As the person who is absolutely not interested in the things of God. And we say, Lord, this is unfair. But at least I go to church. Do not forget my, anal my analogy. 35 over 100. Based on the great system is the same. Hmm. Could that be why many, many believers don't seem to rise? To the point where people can look at you and say, at least me, I'm sure I'm not serious with God. But you who looks like you are serious, why are our results the same? In the name of Jesus, the kind of light that fires from heaven through his word to you, it will produce a clear difference between you and anyone who is not serious with God. Please sit down. Sufficient knowledge sufficient not enough the person who gets a may not get 100 but he did not fail too far to be mocked are we together everybody say light let me challenge you therefore in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god this is not the season for empty noise this is the season to go back and camp with the truth some of you after this conference go and get pastor's materials don't say i was there when he taught it has the result justified your being there that day camp with it lord this finance thing i am tired you are lifting my prophet you are honoring him giving him a voice i can't be here sitting saying amen every sunday and this thing is not changing and you go and camp with it. The Bible says, through desire, Proverbs 18, 1, a man haven't separated him. You see, most, you don't hear these kinds of testimonies again, where people would tell you, I took a three days retreat in prayer and fasting, locking myself with the word. Father, let light come from heaven. There has to be a way. Why is this thing not moving? Can I tell you, the only person who receives an answer is the one who can ask a question an answer is a harvest the seed is a question if you are too proud to ask and to inquire you are also too proud to receive father why is this not working that to take care of two children I'm a Christian, I love God, and it looks like I'm dying. Whereas there is someone who, as at the time I came to Abuja, I was the one helping this person. It's not unhealthy comparison, but I'm provoking myself unto godliness. There has to be a way. The Bible says in Jeremiah, has God helped somebody tonight? 
it says thus saith the lord stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the good path wherein is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls but they said we will not walk there are many many people who are absolutely bankrupt of results and only remain as commentators in life I have never seen, I may be wrong, but I've never seen five wings. They are the ones who lift the profit. And when they are converting it to cash, I'm not aware that they call anybody anywhere and say, because you were in the stadium, come and share. Stop being a fan and challenge yourself as this fan mentality that i am just around good things but i never partake of it i i'm always i was there when he testified i was there when they prophesied i was there i saw the person fall down i saw the person cry i was there 10 years ago i still remember a fan mentality you must challenge yourself lord if it will happen i will be part of it in the name of Jesus Christ, someone shout light. Please, in one minute, I'd like you to lay your hands on your head and declare, open up, open up for light. I speak to my destiny. Uh, I've encompassed this mountain long enough. Open up. Someone you are prophesying in the name of Jesus. I am a man of God, but I am tired of this level of ministry. Lord, stretch me to a higher level by the power of light. Bring exactitude to my results, exactitude and mastery to my spiritual experience. In the name of Jesus, please sit down. So the first non-negotiable requirement, if your life must be extraordinary and if you must host and manifest superior dimensions of the glory of God, is light access to knowledge you must know what is there this kingdom is knowledge dependent forget about acquisition acquisition is tertiary the primary goal of lifting use it quickly oh fire let your mind be holy god's fire